Hello, everyone, and welcome to KBRA's first quarter 2022 Bank Podcast. This is John Rempe, and I'm joined by Leah Halfors from KBRA's Financial Institutions Group. Today, we plan to cover the key highlights from the first quarter financial results of KBRA's rated universe within the community banking sector. So, Leah, what are your main observations for the current quarter? Yeah, thanks, John. So to summarize some of the key observations and themes that we saw across our rated universe in the first quarter included the continued pressure on earnings performance reflected in ROA despite stabilized net interest margins. We also saw a high level of asset sensitivity among our coverage universe that should benefit from the rising rate cycle. We noted that core capital levels, namely the CET1 ratio, remain stable despite continued returns to shareholders and loan growth. And then also the unrealized mark-to-market losses on the available for sale securities portfolio due to the jump in interest rates negatively impacting TCE. And in this edition of the compendium, we also featured an interesting spotlight on the inflationary pressures on new and used vehicle prices. And then we looked at the potential risks within our rated universe by examining the level of exposure that our banks had to auto lending. And then lastly, John, our compendium includes a quarterly ESG bulletin, which highlights a rated name each quarter, and then also provides the latest updates from regulators on the ESG front. Thanks, Leah. Next, I'll break down some of the key highlights. First, earnings performance. So profitability trended lower for the quarter with median ROA reflecting a nine basis point decline to 1.11%. And some of the reasons behind this were the absence of extraordinary revenue drivers from 2021, which includes normalization or dissipating mortgage revenue and uh, PPP fee income. Um, Additionally, the extreme volatility of the markets, both in equity and fixed income, also negatively impacted wealth management revenue. It's also worth noting that there's been an elevated focus on banks' overdraft fees in recent periods, with several KBRA-rated banks announcing that they will waive or adjust their NSF overdraft fees moving forward. However, in our view, banks will clearly work to replace this lost revenue with additional sources of fee income. However, we expect fee income to face some pressure moving forward. With regard to NIM, it stayed relatively stable with a slight median decline of two basis points to 315 for the first quarter of 2022. This is despite a large portion of the KBRA coverage universe shifting its earning asset mix into investment securities in prior periods, which helped bolster interest income, but at the expense of their margins. A key driver behind the NIM stability was solid loan growth, even robust at times, as well as continued reduction in funding costs albeit at a much slower rate. However, this was offset by lesser of an impact of PPP interest due to the forgiveness process being mostly finished. The median loan loss reserve position declined six basis points in the quarter after last quarter's five basis point decline. However, loan growth played a larger role in the first quarter than in previous quarters on the decline in reserve positions. Lastly, KBRA recognized that fewer rated banks recorded reserve releases in 1Q 2022 compared to the prior quarters. Yeah, thanks for that earnings breakdown, John, and certainly different from what we saw this time last year. As we look forward with loan growth picking up and a Federal Reserve committed to tackling inflation with higher Fed funds rates, KBRA evaluated the asset sensitivity of our coverage universe of public banks to see how the higher rate environment may impact their earnings profiles. And the way that we evaluated that, John, was by pulling the percent change in net interest income if rates were 100 basis points higher as of year-end numbers. And what we found was that overall, the mean rate was 4.5% in an up 100 basis point scenario and 8.1% in an up 200 basis point scenario. And then if you isolate only the asset-sensitive banks, the mean rate was 5% and 10.5% respectively for each of those scenarios. We also found that our top 15 most asset-sensitive banks saw the percent change in net interest income range from 10.2% to 59.7% in an up 100 basis point scenario. And a key attribute that underlies many of the top 15 most asset-sensitive banks is extremely low funding costs, primarily from their low-cost core deposit basis. And then the floating rate earning assets are another contributing factor to elevated asset sensitivity. 
So then, John, if you isolate the liability sensitive banks, the mean for the up 100 basis point scenario was a negative 0.92% and then negative one and a half percent in an up 200 basis point scenario. And our top 15 most liability sensitive banks saw the percent change in net interest income ranging from negative 0.5% to negative 4.9% if rates were 100 basis points higher. As we look to future earnings expectations, KBR believes that due to the moderate to high overall asset sensitivity of the institutions that we cover, and in conjunction with healthy loan origination pipelines and declining paydowns, we expect NIM expansion in the second quarter of this year. And that should continue into the second half of the year as well, as deposit betas are expected to be low during at least the first 100 basis points of interest rate increases due to banks remaining flush with significant amounts of non-maturity core deposits. Thanks, Leah. And next, let me touch on capital. So median core capital levels as measured by the CET1 ratio remain relatively flat in 1Q 2022 as returns to shareholders and growth and risk-weighted assets were balanced against a slightly lower earnings profile for the industry. The larger story related to capital was the 50 basis point decline in the median TCE ratio, largely stemming from the unrealized mark-to-market impact on the available for sale investment security portfolios, negatively impacting the accumulated other comprehensive income component of capital due to significant yield curve changes during the first quarter. The AFS security portfolio accounts for roughly 15% of total assets, which, which are exposed to valuation impacts as interest rates rose and drove down prices of fixed income securities. Some banks shifted a portion of the AFS securities into held to maturity, which does not get marked to market each quarter. From a regulatory perspective, banks that are not subject to the advanced approach regulatory framework have the option to opt out of including AOCI in the regulatory capital calculations. And all of the KBRA rated banks included in in the compendium have opted out and do not include AOCI in their respective capital measures. Moving forward, KBRA expects capital management to be aggressively managed as banks continue their repurchase programs and also experience loan growth focused in commercial loan categories, which typically carry higher risk weightings rather than consumer-oriented categories. Yeah, good color on capital there, John. As I mentioned earlier on, in this edition of the compendium, we also focused on the auto loan segment and the underlying inflationary pressures how higher auto prices have impacted growing loan balances, and then also potential concentrations among the KBRE-rated universe should payment disruptions occur in the future. Overall, only seven of KBRE-rated banks have auto lending exposure of greater than 10% of their respective loan balances, with three of these institutions having exposure representing greater than 100% of risk-based capital. KBRE views these auto risks to be manageable for these seven institutions as the loss absorption factors have been boosted over the last year with higher loan loss reserves and core capital. Moreover, we found that these institutions are selective on the borrower front and have steered clear of subprime auto lending exposure. With that said, though, we will continue to monitor for an uptick in delinquencies or loss rates, which have been fairly contained since 2018 and have been supported since the onset of the pandemic by the significant amount of government stimulus. Finally, John, I would also remind our listeners that our compendium includes a quarterly ESG bulletin, and for this quarter, we featured PacWest Bancorp, as well as provided the latest regulatory developments on the ESG front, which included a summary of the March 2022 vote, where the SEC voted three to one in favor of proposing requirements for climate disclosure on annual statements for publicly listed companies. And we think that this would provide consistency across industry reporting. So certainly an ever-evolving topic that we will continue to monitor for new developments. Well, listeners, that's a wrap for our first quarter Bank Compendium podcast, and we hope you found it to be useful. We would encourage our listeners to read the Compendium research piece for more in-depth information on all the KBRA-rated publicly traded institutions. We look forward to speaking with everyone again next quarter. And as always, you can find all of our research at www.kbra.com and have a nice day.